Hello, so over the weekend I was at the Deer Shed Festival. On the Saturday it was raining and I was in the science tent doing this kind of like um, interactive synthesizer thing with um, Div Kid, Mylar Melodies, Baba and Ganoush, Lina and Higa and um, yeah, it was, it was very interesting. Basically I just let all of the kids and people play on the synthesizers, which was not very well thought out because on Sunday I actually played a gig in the Deer Shed Festival and yeah. I didn't think it through and it all was uh, pulled apart, but it was managed to be sorted in time for the show. I didn't get much footage there, in fact, I didn't get any. So on Friday morning, just before I left, in a complete rush, I realised I didn't really have that many interactive things for the kids to play on, because twisted knobs that they didn't really know what they were twisting was like a bit strange. So I decided to um, pack my solar freaking roadways, which is basically just solar panels soldered straight to jack cables. You wire the jack cables into there, wire it to any synthesizer, and you can control that synth with light by using the solar panel. Solar panel, the more light, the higher the voltage, the higher the note or the higher the cut off frequency or whatever. Very simple project to do. The link to this video is in the description and Simon the Magpie actually uh, was influenced to do this as well and do his own video on it as well, so go and check that one out as well. As for the actual Friday morning, I was in a rush and I had a bit of copper pipe sitting around. So I made these things. These are like basically batons. This has got a 9 volt battery on it and this has not got a 9 volt battery on it. They've got jacks. What happens is you touch it, the 9 volts travels through the pipe into there and triggers it. And this is just create, completing a contact. And it was pretty fun. I was quite surprised that kids kind of just kept on going like this. I mean, it's not probably not the most child-friendly material to make something like this out of a bit of copper pipe because, you know, you could catch your fingers on it, but that's what risk assessments are for, right? This is not all that these are meant to do. We'll talk about that in a second. But I'll talk about where this kind of idea came from. So uh, back in, I think, 2011, maybe 2012, I was messing around and it's probably not, it's not a new idea. There's definitely some other things that use it. Capacitive touch is a sort of way of doing this, but it's a little bit less selective than this. But um, this actual thing is a speaking spell with two bolts hanging out of it. Yeah, I know. But um, <laughs> this was actually the first machine that I built to do this kind of thing. And basically what you did was you held onto it, you squeezed it. The harder you squeeze, the higher the note goes. And basically the harder you squeeze is more contact on the metal, the more kind of conductivity going through your body. Probably not the best um, thing straight through your heart, but it's very um, it's a very small amount of charge. It's tiny, but um, basically this used to trigger an Arduino in here to make a higher note. I actually did a video on this as well. It was called the Madonna Bra. I basically took this idea and turned it into a Madonna Bra. Yeah, a bit strange. <laughs> but yeah, if you if you're interested in that project, go and check it out. But this kind of have a battery, kind of wire it up, was also involved in one of the first kind of look mum no computer videos I actually did. Way back in the middle of 2016, I basically made a tinfoil helmet and also a tinfoil drum pad. Basically all these were, were just finishing the contact to a battery to trigger like a synthesizer or a drum machine or anything. It could even trigger a could even trigger a light. The great thing about this project is it requires zero soldering, so anybody can do it and it's quite fun for kids because you don't get electric shocks. So before we kind of carry on, let's kind of try this project out and I'll show you like the easiest way of doing this because there's a lot more to this project than I have actually spoke about yet. So um, let's turn this uh, Mo Grandmother on. We're gonna use this as an example because it's kind of like a synthesizer you can just buy at a shop nowadays anyway, so it's always a good one. And it's got the necessary inputs, but you can use a drum machine, you can use any really synthesizer, as long as it's got some sort of trigger input or also control voltage input, kind of pitch input, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So I've got this random jack cable. They're pretty cheap, they're only about a pound, I think, a mini jack cable you can get. But it's probably best to use a pair of scissors, uh, but um, but I'm at my basement flat right now, and uh, sadly, I this is all I could find, which is a sinister kitchen knife. So I'm gonna cut the wire in half. Ooh. Mind my face. Oh, I did that really short. And um, if you have scissors, it's quite easy to do this, but I'm just gonna take off the outer sheath. So we've got that hanging around. It's just literally just that. That's all we got. So we've got this outer shell stuff. We kind of take that all to one side. And this is the ground of the cable. This is the, this is the sleeve of the cable. So we're gonna grab that over here. So we've got that, 
Very nice. And we got this other one. I'm gonna shave that one as well. So we've got that. That's what it looks like. We've got the tip wire, which is gonna be the positive part, and the um, ground part. So we've got a nine volt battery. You get you get the bit that is in the middle of the wire and you can kind of wrap that around the plus terminal of the nine volt battery and tighten it up. Kind of like so. You see that? It's as easy as that. And then you get a bit of tape and you just tape it around it. Ooh, like so. The great thing is, is what happens is when you uh, get the other wire and you put the wire on the negative. Boo, boo, boo. Well, uh, yeah, I'll show you. So I'm gonna plug this into the trigger input of the synthesizer or drum machine or whatever, and then look. So basically you can do this with a nine volt battery. And this is where I got to in a talk in Berlin and then I kind of ran out of ideas and kind of took it to a little bit of a next level when I was plugging it into the fart box. Basically the fart machine, it was wired into a sort of farty sound and um, yeah, it kind of went something like this. I've never tried this before. <laughs> never seen on on the stage. <laughs> okay, okay, let's see how this goes. Okay, so it's gonna look like um, a sumo wrestler, I think. So I'm gonna start with the waistband. Okay. Oh, I don't want to break them. Should have made them a bit bigger. This is wasteful. Oh, <laughs> shit. I'm gonna double this up. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that could work. <laughs> oh, that's, I made him a bit tight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, now. Okay. <laughs> oh, electronics can be fun. <laughs> You just gotta make sure there's loads of fart jokes. That's what I think I'm gonna put on my grave. Oh, oh yeah, you can't see, sorry. <laughs> oh. Okay, okay. Oh, shucks. Oh, right, I've got a bit of wire, I think I might need it. I'm making this up in my head, like a, I think I know what I'm doing and I like to act like I know what I'm doing, but really, oh, I don't have a clue. So my idea is, the positive on the 9 volt um, needs to connect via a long wire. Oh, I should have made a longer cable. Oh, I just did it with my tongue. What's that? Oh! Actually, one sec, um, I've just got an idea, I just came up with an idea, so if you hold you hold that, just put your finger on that, and then we high five. No, on the metal. <laughs> so what you just saw there is it could still complete the circuit through human flesh and, you know, bodies, like this. Like, uh, oh, oh. So this finger is on the wire, and then this finger is on the negative uh, of the 9 volt battery. <laughs> But the crazy thing is it doesn't stop there. What happens if you have more people? Well. Hold hands. Oh, that's so um, how are we gonna do this? You're holding it. You've got everybody hold hands. Um, yeah. Let's go. yeah, hold hands and I'll go over it. Let's see if we can get to the end of this. Oh! Breaking the link. <laughs> oh no! Okay, okay. So we got up to, um, sorry, I was trying to get a good contact. I can't, hope, I, hope that wasn't misconstrued. <laughs> I was just trying to get a fart out of you. <laughs> okay, But what happens if you have more people with sweaty hands? Who's embarrassed that they got sweaty hands? Put your hands up if you've got sweaty hands. Please, nobody wants to wake up. We've got one, 
One sweaty hander. Have we got any other sweaty handers? We need sweaty handers because then there's more conductivity. <laughs> Come on. Okay, so hold on, so you just gotta put your finger on that. Yeah. Uh, you can hold on, just don't be good. And then, have you got sweaty hands? Yeah. Now you put your finger on that. And now, like you, high five each other. <laughs> and now you've got kind of a uh, sweaty hand collective. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, let's run. Okay, how many people are in the chain? Now, yeah. now where, let's see if we can do touch you. No, I'm yeah. getting lost. <laughs> hey! Yeah, that's crazy. That was like 10 people holding hands in a row and it still completed the circuit. This is great. It's not going to electrocute anybody. I don't know about pacemakers. Don't hold me to that. Don't try it. I mean, unless you want to try it. And who knows, maybe if there's a lot of sweaty people, there might be more. I did try this in a few of the gigs on tour as well, where there are sweaty people because they're all dancing around. Halfway through, it got a lot more conductive. And yeah. <laughs> Now hold hands, you both hold hands, now high five me. <laughs> 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 hold hands, hold hands, hold hands, because this is going to go all the way around. <laughs> no, 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 hold hands, hold hands. Yeah, yeah, high five. Come on, keep going. <laughs> You can see there that I was making farts with people and high-fiving. It's a pretty cool kind of idea that you could kind of try out with, you know, your kids or your friends and family and stuff. But the t it's kind of like the, that's the same method as the tin foil pad. It's just creating the contact. But you saw there at some point I was able to do it with just my hand. I wasn't didn't even have tin foil on my hand and I was still able to create contact because the actual I was holding the wire on the other side. Mm. But the craziness doesn't stop there. So a bit like this Arduino project, where the harder you squeeze, the higher the note goes, the Madonna bra one. Uh, well, I found out at the deer shed, um, after a while, you know, just experimenting, that you could actually do it with the pitch. In order to do it with the pitch, it requires a slightly different configuration, and this crudely put together dodgy Photoshop picture will actually show you how to do that, and this is how these are done. All it's required is tape, hot glue, 9 volt battery, and some copper pipe. Mm. But yeah, let's plug these ones in. So I'll plug the one with the 9 volt battery. This is the one that needs to be connected to the ground. I'll just plug that into any kind of jack socket that isn't being used because you just need to connect the ground to the sleeve. So I'll put that in one of the utilities. And I'll wire the one without the battery over into the pitch in. The great thing about this mode, grandmother, is you can flick a switch on the voltage controlled amplifier, which means it's always droning. And uh, it says drone on this switch, so I'll flick that. Oh God, that's hard. I'm not going to sit and try and learn how to play these. I may at one point, but that's the thing. You could make this like an expression of thing, but it doesn't stop there. Annoyingly, I am not able to show you this right now, but you're going to have to take my word for it. And it does actually work. This works the same with holding people's hands. So loads of people hold hands. One of them at one end of the chain holds this. One of them at the other end of the chain holds this. And the harder they all squeeze hands and stuff, the higher the note goes. 
I think this is an amazingly collaborative project and I'll definitely recommend if you are at all planning on doing some sort of you know collaborative thing with kids or people that like a workshop or something with a synthesizer and stuff to definitely try and make one of these or get them to make them and you know play it because it's all about holding hands and being happy <laughs> but yeah that was just a little insight into this project i'll probably touch on it more if you've got any questions then please ask away and yeah and actually i completely forgot i used this method in a video from quite a while back when i had this big metal orb and i was touching it and it was sending off some random triggers when i was playing with sim on drums in the church and that was pretty interesting as well i actually had the wire attached to my shoe so it was attached to my shoe dragging off to my modular synth and then when i touched the contact on the uh on the ferret on the ball it was uh, making the music i'm still working on the game boy mega machine as well as some other projects and stuff that are actually uh, new uh, i haven't spoke about yet and you can see the vlogs kind of video updates up over on my patreon about that stuff so if you're interested go and check that out so yeah go and get some nine volt batteries some jack cables and some gaffer tape and don't be scared to try it